this is lecture video 40 and I will explain washer method in this lecture. It is a method to compute the volume of three-dimensional solids again that are obtained by revolving some regions. Look at this region, please, here. If you revolve it around x-axis, because of this empty part in your region, between your region and the x-axis, there will be ho a hole inside your three-dimensional object, right? So let's try to imagine it. This uh, yellow shaded part, which is the empty part, will cause this hole, will um, construct this hole inside your three-dimensional object, right? This is the hole. There is a hole inside the object, inside the solid. And now this, these shaded parts, which are in fact your region, if you revolve them around x-axis like this, will correspond to all the uh, three-dimensional solid parts. So it is kind of here in this picture. And we want to compute the volume of this three-dimensional object by using, again, these vertical cross-sections. The cross-sections are not full disks anymore. They, are, they look like rings now because of this hole inside, right? Because of this hole, the empty space inside, they are not full disks anymore. They look like rings. Okay, you look at the cross-sections here. Okay, now let's take it to this part to understand, try to understand it better. Okay, it looks like this, right? And there is an empty, empty disk inside a bigger disk. That's why the cross sections are rings now. Okay, A of X cross sections are not full disks anymore, they are rings. Area of ring, okay, how to express the area of this ring? So, you know, we, we had these curves, they have some certain expressions. The outer curve is expressed as R of X and the inner curve is expressed as the small letter R of X. If we choose these uh, letters because this is this part from center to here. Okay, center is here. From here to here, this is the outer radius of your disk, right? Okay, this part is the big letter R, which is the outer radius of your ring. And from center to this part, okay, it is the radius of the smaller disk, which is the empty disk in the middle. So it is given by this curve here, which is the lower curve in your region. So the red curve defines your inner radius. So this is R of X, which is the inner radius, okay? So inner radius. And big letter R gives you the outer radius. Okay, this is this setting. And let me also show them in my picture. I want to show the inner radius with green. So here, this part is the inner radius and I used blue for the outer radius. This part is the big radius. And to compute the area of this ring, what should I do? I should subtract the areas of, I mean, I, I should take the difference of the areas of big disk and the small ram to disk inside, right? So it will go like this then. Square of this minus the area of the smaller empty part inside like that. So the cross-sectional area can be expressed like pi, you can take common factor pi out, so outer radius minus square of the inner radius. Once you express this in your problems, you will just integrate it to find the volume of your three-dimensional solid object here, right? So this part 
there is a hole, we emphasize that empty part. So after you find the area of the ring, then all you need to do to integrate it over the interval of integration, which is from A to B in this figure. Right. Okay, that's why Washer method, the volume uh, formula has this structure that we already emphasized here, where big letter R gives you the outer radius of your ring. And this part gives you the inner radius of your ring. And they are determined by the curves defining your region. And then you will integrate it. And this is what? This is the area of the cross-sectional ring. So there is an empty side inside. Okay, let's uh, look at the first example that we will be using Bosch's method. Okay, here is your region and you are revolving this region now. Revolve this given region around X axis. Okay, so if you revolve it around X axis, Three dimension, this three-dimensional solid will appear. Now, all we need to do is to find the outer radius and the inner radius of it. So let's concentrate on this cross section here, which is a ring, obviously. And this is your, the center of the ring. And from here to here, this red line gives you this part, which is the outer radius of your ring, right? The outer radius is given by this formula. Where does this formula come from? Because it is determined by this line, you see? So this line here and equation of that line is minus x plus three. That's why the formula for the outer radius comes from this line here. And then let's look at the inner radius of this disk. And the inner radius then is determined by this curve, which is a parabola, right? Okay, let me draw it with red. Red gives you the outer radius, green gives you the green curve, gives you the inner radius. So the, uh, this part, this length is the inner radius and it is given by this green parabola whose equation is this one. Okay, that's why the inner radius is x squared plus one, just like given here. Okay, when you look at the curves, your region, carefully you understand where is the outer radius and where is the inner radius, they are determined by your curves. So I think we are ready now to um, construct an expression for the cross sectional rings. So this method is called washer method. As long as you have an empty hole inside, you will be using washer method, meaning that you, you are using ring type of cross sections. Okay, so A of X, the cross sectional area, area of ring is expressed pi outer radius squared minus pi inner radius squared. So pi, we, uh, we understand that the outer radius is determined by the line. So it is given by minus x plus three squared. Okay, so I took pi out. Inner radius is given by x squared plus one squared, right? Maybe I should use colors to express. I, I expressed in red the outer radius, so minus x plus three squared, and the inner radius is expressed in green, so x squared plus one squared, right? So this expression gives you the area of the ring, and then the volume is nothing but the definite integral of this a of x over which interval? You see, this is the interval of integration from minus two to one on x-axis. So you need to put from minus two, sorry, minus two to one for your boundaries of integral. So minus two to one 
a of x, which is given like that. Minus x plus three squared minus x plus one squared dx. So this is the expression giving you the volume of this three-dimensional object, which is obtained by revolving this region around x-axis. And this type of method is called the washer method uh, because you are using not the full disks, but the rings, areas of the rings. So it is called washer method then. Okay, let me move on. Now we will um, consider again the washer method in the symmetric world, meaning that now everything will be in terms of y, not x, but y. So the cross-sectional rings, as you can see here, are horizontal rings, not vertical rings anymore, which are vertical to x-axis, which surrounds the x-axis. In the previous example, we used vertical disks, everything with, was with respect to x. Now we will be using horizontal disks that, that are summed up through y-axis, everything it will be with respect to y. Okay, this is our region now, and we revolve this region around, revolve the region around not x but y-axis this time. See, we are revolving it around y-axis to obtain this three-dimensional object. And now you need to slice your three-dimensional solid horizontally like this. The cross-sections are horizontal rings. And I want to express the area of this cross-section, okay, area of this ring. Okay, let's try. Obviously, there will be an inner radius and there will be an outer radius. So you choose some arbitrary point y on your y-axis and from here to here, the point that you hit on x-axis, this point will give you your inner radius. And if you choose y here, which point you hit on x-axis? So it is determined by this line, right? This line is y equals 2x line. Okay, normally the equation of this line is y equals 2x, but you want to find the x hitting point. So you need to solve this line in terms of x to obtain y over 2. That's why this point on x axis is y over 2, which will be your inner radius. And similarly, for the outer radius, you start from the center of the ring again, you go up to here, and then you search for the x hitting point again on x-axis. Normally this curve is given by y equals x squared equation, but you need to find the x hitting point. So this point is x equals, so you solve for x, x equals square root y. So the outer radius is given by square root of y formula. This is the outer radius. And similarly, let's show them here. This is your inner radius and from here to here this is your outer radius and inner radius is obviously this hitting point on x-axis which we explained here this point is x equals 2 over y and for the outer radius you hit this x point on x-axis, they are coming from the equations of this line, y equals 2x line for the inner radius and y equals x squared curve for the outer radius, okay? So that's it. Once you express the inner radius and outer radius in terms of y, you can just create the expression uh, pi inner radius, outer radius square minus pi inner radius squared. That's why it goes like pi. Outer radius is given by square root of y, square of it, minus, what is this inner radius? It is two over y. So to find the volume by Voucher method, we need to integrate everything. So 
everything is with respect to y. You see, you you are summing up the areas of these rings through y axis, so everything should be written in terms of y. Also, the boundaries. You see, this is the interval of integration. It ranges from zero to four. So zero to four, and then I can complete the expression by taking the formula here. It is pi square root of y is the outer radius minus two over y is the inner radius like this and dy. If you compute this integral, you will find eight pi over three as your result. And I stop here, we covered how to use washer method in this lecture video to compute the volumes of solids that has empty holes inside.